What's up guys? In today's video, we're talking about every reason a dryer will overheat. And this particular dryer we're talking about today is any type of dryer that has a filter that comes out the top. Now, if you have a dryer that doesn't have that, it'll have similar problems, but how we take it apart and how we test it might be slightly different, but this video may still be helpful for you. If you have a dryer that has a filter out the top, it could be a lot of different brands. It could be Whirlpool, Kenmore, Estate, Crosley, a mana and some Maytag. What we're going to start off with is the easy problems, and I have a list, that don't require any parts or any money to solve. And the number one problem is the dryer itself is stopped up with lint and you need to go through and take every part off that would have lint stopped up, mainly around where the actual filter goes in the fan. It's gonna have lint built up around it. I have an entire step-by-step -step guide that will walk you all the way through how to clean it out. Check out the video in the description. But before you do that, let's check everything else first. Uh, is the filter clogged up? And not, is it just slightly dirty and do you not clean it on a regular basis? I'm not talking about that. But if the screen itself has a wax buildup, this will normally be caused, the theory is from the dryer sheets, will make a wax buildup on your actual filter and it will not be able to breathe. A dryer that cannot breathe well will overheat because it can't exhaust the hot air out fast enough. So just take a close look. If it looks like it's slightly blocked up, you can use extremely hot water and that will usually melt that away, scrub it a little bit, it'll usually go away. You can take it underneath a sink and just run water. If it runs straight through it, it's probably fine. If it's kind of pulling up, it's probably blocked up. All right, the next thing to check is the outside flapper or uh, sometimes it's called a rodent guard or rodent screen. They'll be over the outside vent. Uh, these will be stopped up sometimes. Then check the exhaust vent pipe from the back of your dryer to the wall. Sometimes if you have the dryer pushed up against the wall too tightly, it will bend the hose or you could just have too long of an exhaust pipe itself uh, people they will buy the 10 to 20 foot piece or they'll just buy the 10 foot piece and they'll just roll it up behind it. The longer that pipe is, the more resistance it's going to have and the more likely any lint that gets by the filter itself will drop somewhere in that pipe or will drop somewhere uh, outside maybe in that same flapper. It won't have enough velocity to push that stuff all the way out of your house. Next thing to check for is the exhaust pipe from your house going outside, sometimes people will put the wrong size on. It will be a three inch pipe instead of a four inch pipe. This will be really easy to know. If you take your four inch dryer exhaust pipe and go to hook it to the wall and you have to take a hose clamp and really ring it down until it hits that smaller pipe, that's wrong. You're gonna have to fix that. It's just the wrong size pipe. Someone's put the wrong one in and it's going to again, make it harder for your dryer to push hot air out fast enough and overheat your dryer. All right, the next thing to check is the dryer intake doesn't have a dryer sheet stuck against the intake. They're kind of waxy and when a dryer is hot, they're a little bit sticky. And if they just happen to hit it just right, they'll stick on the intake and the dryer will, again will not be able to breathe out fast enough. It will overheat and will be feeling warm. It'll overheat your clothes. So check for that. The next issue would be if you're at an apartment and they are using one line for several dryers. Uh, this is a really bad idea because sometimes it will back feed into other dryers, filling them up with lint along the way. It's best to have a separate line for each dryer. And I know some households will have two dryers, and if you have two dryers, just make sure you're using a separate line for each dryer. The next one is less likely to overheat your dryer, but you may just notice as a one-time thing, if you overstuff your dryer with towels or sheets or a blanket, that same intake may not be able to breathe out fast enough because the towels or the blanket will be against it for too long as it's rotating around, causing the dryer to overheat. And if you notice it only happens when you put in large loads, it may be that you're overstuffing your dryer. All right, that was it for everything that has no parts required. The next ones will need some things ordered. And again, I have some Amazon links in the description down below, really helps the channel. First thing we're going to talk about is the blower wheel is broken. And this happens when someone pulls the dryer uh, filter out and something falls in that hole or a kid throws something in the hole and there's a fan in there. And if the fan gets hit hard enough, it will separate from the motor and the fan will no longer be turning. It will sound like it's turning because the motor's running, 
but there'll be no airflow at all and it will overheat extremely quickly. Sometimes this is very rare, but a slipping belt or a broken belt will go unnoticed and the top of the clothes is kind of similar to a stove burning your food on the bottom when you don't stir it. The top of your clothes, because they're not being turned or stirred, are extremely hot and will make you think the dryer's overheating because they'll nearly be burning, yet the bottom will be wet. Sometimes you'll be tricked by this because you won't think it will have a broken belt and it'll just be a stretched belt. So when you put a lot of wet towels, something heavy in the dryer itself, the belt will be stretched and the drum will just turn around the belt and actually is not turning at all and it's just the clothes getting hot on top. So if one quick way of checking if a belt's broken is turn the dryer on, open it real quick and see if the drum itself is turning. If it's turning, it's more than likely not broken. While you're right here, the actual seals in this dryer has a bad seal will be out on a dryer sometimes causing it to overheat but, or it will exhaust the air around the drum back seal. So there's a seal on the drum itself and when that goes bad it will start pushing air around the back seal and into this metal frame around the dryer making the dryer itself hot instead of exhausting the hot air out of the pipe out the back because the seals are leaking it's leaking out the wrong areas. All right, the next three things are on the back side of the dryer. So we're gonna turn the dryer around. I'm gonna take a few things off. Uh, this will involve power, so be sure to unplug your dryer because we don't wanna die. All right, so the next issue you could have is a bad timer motor. So a timer, if you imagine a clock that has points that tells the timer to come on and off, as the clock comes around, it will touch that point until it turns heating element on or heating element off. The motor is what runs that clock. So if you notice that your timer is not progressing, let's say you put it on air dry, this is a good test for it. Turn it on air dry, and it does not progress. It just stays on air dry for a very, very, very long time. This could be a burned up timer motor, and that will cause your dryer to overheat because when you put it on time dry, it will not progress as well, and it will just stay on constantly. The next one will be a thermostat going out, which this is a lower limit thermostat. That's a higher limit thermostat. When a thermostat goes out, sometimes it will tell it to turn on and off at the wrong temperatures. A thermostat's supposed to let it go up to the right temperature before it starts overheating, tell it to turn off, and when the dryer gets a little bit too cool, it'll tell it to turn back on and it will bounce it between those temperatures. When a thermostat starts to go bad or gets clogged up with lint behind it, it will not register the temperatures right and it may let it go way too high. The next thermostat that takes over is this higher limit one, which is a backup, and it's set for a slightly higher limit it's a backup in case that one goes out. But when this one starts taking over, the dryer will get a lot hotter. This is the backup thermostat and it should not be being used. If you notice this has gone out, I would replace everything back here. There's a kit that replaces all the fuses and the thermostats. It's fairly inexpensive and it's a good idea to replace everything when one of these pieces goes wrong. The next one is a grounded out heating element. And I have a video on this. Check out this video in the links below on exactly how to test for it. But basically what's going on is this heating element is not quite broken, but is warped and is touching the frame of the dryer itself and turning it on constantly. You'll notice this problem with, uh, it's an odd problem. If you turn it on to anything, let's say you turn it on to time dry about the 30 minute mark and you haven't pressed the start button yet, but the heating element comes on. You'll open up the dryer, you can put your hand in there and you can feel it's hot. That is more than likely a grounded out heating element. Most of the time when you'll never discover this problem because it will burn up a fuse above it that is supposed to trip off the entire heating element whenever that problem happens. It's a thermal fuse, so it's looking for a high temperature, or a too high temperature and it will turn the heating element off permanently until that fuse is replaced. But if you just replace that fuse, the heating element is still grounded out and it will just burn up the next one and the next one. So take your uh, tester, test to see if that 
actual heat and element is burned up by checking the video below. Super easy to do, but it's a little bit uh, more involved if you do not know how to use a tester. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Please like, please subscribe. And again, this is just a quick video on how to see every single problem that a dryer could have if it's overheating. Check out the description below. I have tons of videos on how to fix most every problem I have mentioned today in this particular type of dryer. Hope you guys like the video. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching guys and please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. Also if you have any doubts the part you're going to get is the right one, check out the video I link in the description below. It will walk you step by step to use your model number to find the right parts. Also check out the playlist on the right, it's every repair for this exact machine.